Good Wednesday morning. Thank you for tuning in. Today is uh, December 23, which means it's the 23rd day of Advent of Code. We've arrived at the final three days. Uh, we've made it really far. I haven't guessed it myself. Uh, when I started this stream at the beginning of the month, I thought I would end up somewhere. Maybe, maybe I would get until 15th or 17th day. But um, we, uh, we managed to get really far and that's uh that's wonderful i'm really happy for it and i'm uh, thankful also for some of my uh loyal uh, uh fans and views uh, viewers who have uh, helped me along the way and gave me tips here and there um yesterday we managed to solve the 22nd day uh fairly quick as well in about two hours was uh, easier than expected around this uh, so far in the event and uh, we were, as you can see on the map, we were um, uh, on our own built raft on our way to the final destination, which is our holiday resort here. It's appearing, it's coming up. And um, today's, uh, today looks like we're almost, it's gonna be our, the final leg of our journey on that raft. Uh, and, and, um, uh, Without further ado, let's get into it. Day 23. If you're uh, watching, uh, say hello in the chat. Let me know uh, how you're doing and uh, how you got here. And uh, if you have any questions as well uh, of whatever I am uh, coding or if you just want to know, I don't know, maybe you're curious about my uh, uh, theme. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to show it anyway. <coughs> Uh, maybe you could about my syntax team. It's bare the team, by the way, the light version. Uh, or if you have any questions, let me know about how I am uh, thinking out loud. Uh, what I usually do, I, I read the puzzle description and then I think out loud about our approach and then I code it and I eventually have bugs and I try to solve the bugs with a debugger and uh, hopefully we're gonna get an answer for today's both parts within a reasonable amount of time. Uh, so therefore, let's get to it, Crab Cups. Uh, the small crab challenges you to a game. So yesterday we played a game with the crab. Uh, today uh, we are playing another game, but then he's challenging us. The crab is going to mix up some cups and... Uh, just making sure... Yeah. Uh, the cup will be... Uh, oh, where, where did we leave off? Oh yeah, the crab is going to mix up some cups and you have to predict where they'll end up. The cups will be arranged in a circle and labeled clockwise. That's uh, bolded, so that must be something essential to uh, the puzzle uh, for today. And uh, the cups are gonna be our input, our puzzle input. For example, if you are labeling, uh, no, if you're labeling where three, two, four, one, five, there would be five cups in a circle going clockwise around the circle, circle from the first cup. The cups will be labeled three, two, four, one, five, and then back to three again, all right? Before the crab starts, it will designate the first cup in your list as the current cup. The crab is then going to do a hundred moves. Each move, the crab does the following actions. So that's four of them, four actions. The crab picks up the three cups that are immediately clockwise of the current cup. They are removed from the circle. Cup spacing is adjusted as necessary to maintain the circle. The crab selects a destination cup. The cup with the label equal to the current cup's label minus one. If this would select one of the cups that were just picked up, the crab will keep subtracting one until it finds a cup that wasn't just picked up. All right. If at any point in this process, the value goes below the lowest value on any cup's label, it wraps around to the highest value on any cup's label instead. All right. So the wraps around is bolded. That for me kind of like suggests we're gonna have to use the module operator. Uh, the crab places the cups it just picked up so that they are immediately clockwise of the destination cup. They keep the same order as when they were picked up. The crab selects a new current cup, the cup which is immediately clockwise of the current cup. All right. So let's see an example. Let's go through an example and see what's happening. For example, suppose your cup labeling were uh, of this very long digit. If the crab were to do merely 10 moves, the following changes would occur. So move number one, this is the current cup. Uh, this is the first cup. 
Um, so it picks up the three cups after it and destination two. I wonder what the destination is then. So what is happening here? Eight, nine, one. So two is removed from between one and five is, and is brought to the front. And now eight and nine, nine and one are um, picked up as well and destination seven. Mm, that's interesting. Okay, I don't really understand. So let me go back to the rules. The crab picks up three cups that are merely clockwise with the current cup. So that's uh, current cup is three. So we're talking about eight, nine and one in this case. They are removed from the circle. Cup spacing is adjusted as necessary to maintain a circle. Okay. The crab selects a destination cup. The cup with a label equal to the current cup's label, uh, cup's label minus one. Oh, I see. So current cup is three, minus one is two. So that's the destination, two. Uh, if this would select one of the cups that were just picked up, the crab will keep. All right, wraps around. The crab places the cups it just picked up so that they are immediately clockwise of the destination cup. They keep the same order as when they were picked up. Oh, I see. So we pick up uh, eight, nine, and one. Our destination cup is two, so we place eight, nine, and one just after two. All right, that makes sense. And then the crab selects a new current cup the cup which is immediately clockwise of the current cup. All right, so current cup was three, and then so we select two. Our destination is two minus one, but we picked up one, so we cannot do that. So we wrap around uh, with the max, and I think nine would be there. Nine is picked up, eight, eight is also picked up. So then seven, so destination is seven. All right, that makes sense. So we place eight, nine, and one after seven. Eight, nine, and one after seven, all right. And then we pick a new current cup, which is five. And then four, six, seven, we pick them up. The destination is gonna be five minus one is four. It's already picked up, so we cannot do that. Four minus one is three. Three is at the front, yes, destination three. So we add four, six, seven before three. No, after three. Uh, let me see. Four, six, seven. We add it after three. But that's interesting because here we have three, four, six, seven. Oh, I see. They just like move the things around a little bit. Yeah. But it, it, this is like going circle clockwise. So it doesn't really matter uh, whether the seven is at the beginning or at the end, as long as they're in the same uh, uh, in the same sequence. So we have four, six, seven after three, uh, and then. Uh, Everything else is before three. Yeah, that makes sense. And then the current cup is eight because that's after five. All right, so that continues. I kind of understand now. And then the final, what's final? In the above example, the cup's value are the labels as they appear moving clockwise around the circle. The current cup is marked with between parentheses. All right, so after the crab is done, uh, so I guess here we only go 10 moves, but we uh, know that in our input we're going to have to go 100 moves. After the crab is done, what order will the cups be in? Starting after the cup labeled 1. Starting after the cup labeled 1. Collect the other cups labels clockwise into a single string with no extra characters. Each number except one should appear exactly once. In the above example, after 10 moves, the cups clockwise from one are labeled. Uh, okay, so this is the final. Nine, two, six, five, eight, uh, three, seven, four. All right, which is this. Nine, two, six, five, eight, three, seven, four. So we start from one, we go clockwise, uh, we do not include one and then we kind of like get, end up with a string. If the crab were to complete all 100 moves, the order of the cup one would be this one. So that's useful to know. We're going to use that to debug our program. Uh, using your labeling, simulate 100 moves. What are the labels on the cups of the cup one? Your puzzle input is, oh, so today's puzzle input is just a single line. All right, uh, let's... Uh, 
create a new file which is going to be our input.txt and we're going to paste it in here and also let's create a new file uh, with an example input this one all right uh, although the example input is kind of like the same but yeah you can use it a uh, new file input to that text put it in here great so let's um, split this to the right move this here as well well let's make this smaller kind of like this yeah and we're gonna use two all right so that seems like it um, all right so let's see how I I'm gonna approach this or oh, so our input is just a single line I guess I could split it and get the single cups so I'm gonna have to do that in any case uh, so then I'm gonna have um, an array of cups and um, <laughs> they're gonna be strings but it's fine we don't really care that they should be numbers because because we're not gonna do any well we might use modulo yeah we actually gonna do comparison so we might have to yeah I'm gonna map them uh, cup I can just use a shorthand yeah, I'm gonna map them to numbers because we're gonna do some number comparisons and modulo so we want them to be uh, numbers uh, or integers instead of uh, strings so that's uh, fine um, let's, I don't need to debug that that's good um, all right so we just have to keep going for a hundred moves so that suggests a while loop and I'm gonna have while well, let i is equal to I guess one that's fine i is smaller than or equal than a hundred and then at the end I'm gonna do an i plus plus to keep going so we're gonna do for a hundred times we're gonna have to play this uh, game with the rules in here which we'll have to program And I'm thinking the end result is gonna be. I'm thinking whether I'm gonna modify the cups in place or not. I think. Uh, let me try. I think I will. So at the end, I'm just gonna have answer part one. It's gonna be something. Uh, and what is that something? So I start at a one. And then I, uh, I see. So what I'll do first is I'm gonna say index of one, and I'm gonna do cups find index cup cup equals one. So I got the index of one, and what I need to do is then I need to change. So I'll end up with a string, something like this, and I need to output this. So, so somehow thinking if I can use slice, to get a new array, let's give it a try. I'm gonna use run.js to spin up a playground here that I can work with. So let's say we have, indeed, we have an array with five, eight, three, seven, four, one, nine, two, six. So that's gonna be our uh, array. And we want this array to be sliced at the index. So let's say we, uh, what's the index of one? Zero, one, two, three, four, five. All right, so maybe we slice it at five until five minus one, will that work? Not really. Uh, because yeah the range is different 
Hmm. It's not gonna wrap around. Maybe what I could do. What I could do. Yeah, I could construct two strings. So um, I'm gonna slice it until um, array length. And then it needs to be plus one because we don't need to include one, nine, two, six. So that's gonna be the second. Uh, I'm gonna use template strings. I'm gonna concatenate that. All right. Um, Oh, and it's already, uh, but I'm going to use join. All right, so we have 9 to 6 here at the beginning, at the end. And then we need to get the uh, the remaining from the beginning. So I guess we could do, um, I guess we could copy this. And then we we'll just say slice from the beginning until index of one and that's gonna give us nine two six five eight three seven four nine two six five eight three seven four exactly so that's the uh, that's what I'm looking for here index of one this is gonna be uh, what did they call this in the puzzle labels on the cups um, cup labels a uh, final cup labels that's what i'm going to name it and then we need to rename array with cup cups cups length cup slice that's good index of one all right and then our answer for the first part is going to be final cup labels wait i made a typo just final labels it's fine Okay, um, so that's that. Let's work on our logic in here. So where are the rules? Here are the rules. So the crab picks up three cups after immediately clockwise at the current cup. So the current cup is, we need to keep track of the current cup because that's gonna shift. As we can see, like now is the first, then second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth. That's gonna shift. That only shifts because that's how they arrange it here. In our array, uh, in our array, we're not going to rearrange things around. I think we might not, but let's keep track. Let's have a variable that um, that keeps track of our current cup. So we'll call it current uh, cup, and it's going to be uh, the first cup for the first time. So that's good. And then what else? They are removed from the circle. Perhaps I need to also keep track of the index of the current cup. Or I could do a find every time. That's gonna be a quick lookup. Uh, and then, so I'm thinking to solve this by just, um, I have this array of cups and I'm just gonna modify that array each iteration. And I'm gonna program these rules. Um, in in the while loop so the crab picks up three cups that are immediately clockwise of the current cup so clockwise means to the right and then um, I'm gonna modify this array I'm gonna remove those cups from uh, the three cups from the array and that, that array is gonna not have them anymore and uh, so let's do that the crab picks up three cups that are immediately clockwise of the current cup. They are removed from the circle. Cup spacing adjusted as necessary to maintain the circle. Exactly. So here, when they say cup spacing is adjusted as necessary to maintain a circle, that means that if you're dealing with like a, whatever data structure you're using to solve this puzzle, it means that when you remove these cups from that data structure, the data structure kind of like comes together to fill the gaps. And uh, if I remove something from an array, and I modify that array in place, that's gonna happen automatically. 
So that's why modifying array in place is what we are uh, looking for. And the method to do that is uh, not shift, not slice, um, splice. Splice, yep, that's what we're looking for. Changes the contents of an array by removing or replacing existing elements and or adding. So we're not gonna add, we're gonna remove. And it's gonna return value, it's gonna be an array containing the deleted elements. All right, so let's uh, have another example here that we can play with. I'll call this array one. Uh, so what do we start with? We're starting with this. So let me just re... Uh, 3, 8, 9, 1, 2, Five, four, six, seven. I want to see that um, what the code does in the playground before I actually put it in the program because things like splice and other methods uh, can be tricky you can get an off by one error which uh, is hard to debug so if I splice it by um, I have the I have the current cup, so I guess what I can do is current cup is going to be array 1, 0. I need to find it in the index of current cup. So I guess I can do that here as well. Uh, let me do that here. Index of current cup is. Um, cups well I can put it up top here and I can call it zero and I can move it actually up top here and I can say index of current cup and then here at the end um, index of current cup is gonna be right plus plus I think but it's gonna have to wrap around the array as well so we need to account for that and current cup is gonna be current cup index of current cup it's kind of like what we will need to do at the end of the uh... but for now let's just say so we have index of current cup here at zero okay so we're gonna splice the array at uh, index of current cup plus one and index of current cup plus four, if I'm not mistaken. So, no, plus three. So we end up with eight, nine, one. Perfect, that's what we need. That's what the uh, uh, array splice returns and then to verify that we modify the our current array in place we have eight nine and one removed the, from the array so we end up with three two five four three two five four exactly awesome so that's what we need I'm gonna copy this from here I'm gonna say um, so our current cup and then I guess we can call these three cups that are immediately clockwise of the current cups. So I can call these three cups. And it's gonna be cups, all right? Um, so we're done with the first rule. Second rule, then uh, the, the crab selects a destination cup. The cup with the label equal to the current cup's, uh, current cup's label minus one. If this would select one of the cups that were just picked up, the crab will keep subtracting one until it finds a cup that wasn't just picked up. If at any point in this process the value goes below the lowest value on any cup's label, it wraps around to the highest value on any cup's label instead. So for this we're going to use the module operator. And uh, I want to know, I want to know the max value that we have that we're dealing with here. I think coincidentally these are 
nine digits one two three four five six seven eight nine yeah so we have all the digits here um i wonder if i can just um I wonder if I can just assume that the max number is going to be 9 and just hard code that in or whether I'll have to do a math max to make it work for well these are single digits yeah I kind of know it's going to be 9 but you could also have smaller inputs with different digits so that that's not going to work so I'm going to use math max as well uh, not as well I'm going to use math max anyway because that's something I'll need to I'll need. So max cup label, or let's call this highest cup, highest cup. And we're gonna use math max cups. I need to destruct the array here because math uh, math max only accepts does not accept an uh, an array as the uh, argument. It accepts. Um, uh, comma separated uh, values so I'm destructing the array here to get the highest cup and I'm gonna use the highest cup for the modulo and um, so what are we looking here we're looking up the for the destination cup so destination cup is is um, And this is going to have to be a loop as well. I'm going to have this a loop. Uh, so while there's no destination cup, keep looking for a destination cup. And Inside of here, we're gonna say destination cup equals to cups find cup um, our current cup minus one, but then needs to be uh, wrapped around. So how are we gonna wrap it around? So. <clears throat> Here we say current cup is three, so we say minus one is two, and then it needs to find that the cup equals current cup minus one. So it's gonna find on our first iteration, it's gonna find destination cup two uh, from the get go, so that's gonna be fine. On our second iteration, uh, two minus one is gonna be one. One is not gonna be present here because we already picked it up. So we modify the array in place, one is not going to be there, so we say one minus one is zero. Obviously zero is not here either. And zero minus one is going to be uh, minus one. And then that's when we need to wrap it around at nine. Nine. So can we say, let me think, can we say um, modulo highest cup? And let me just make sure that precedence is working well here. So three minus one is two, modulo highest cup, which is nine. Two modulo nine is I think two, just making sure. I'm not using modulo that much. Yep, two modulo nine is uh, two, so that's good. Uh, one modulo, so let's see how it goes. One modulo nine is one. Zero modulo nine is zero. Well, yeah, we don't really care about that. Nine modulo nine is. All right, so we're skipping nine. And how about plus one? So back to two. Two modulo, we got, yeah, because our highest our highest value we still need to include that and whenever we're gonna do a uh, number modulo that highest value that the remainder can never be that highest value so we need to add a plus one uh, so we can also get the highest value as the remainder if you understand how modulo works 
So two modulo uh, highest cut plus one is two, one modulo is one, zero is zero, and nine is gonna be nine. Perfect. Eight, seven, awesome. So current cup minus one modulo, highest cup plus one. That's gonna be our uh, code for finding a destination cup. I'm gonna add a comment here. Find destination cup. I mean, yeah. It's, uh, I usually avoid comments. I usually, not avoid comments. Uh, I usually try to make the code readable by itself with uh, descriptive variable names and making sure I'm not too clever. And therefore, it's kind of like the code self explains what it does, so you don't need to add comments. In that case, comments are kind of like, um, mm, yeah, um, uh, not necessary. But in case where your code, you, you cannot make your variables readable enough, or like you're doing something that you need to be done that's clever, or like in a specific way that it's not going to be easy to figure out from somebody who's going to read the code, that's when I add comments. And in this case, it's pretty clear what it does that we're looking for a destination cup. So I don't need to add find destination cup. That comment is futile. It's not gonna add any value to making the code more readable. So no comment needed. So we have our destination cup. And um, uh, 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 um. all right, so let's go to the next game move. The crab places the cups it just picked up so that they are immediately clockwise of the destination cup. They keep the same orders when they were picked up. All right, so immediately clockwise, yeah. So we place them after, after, this, after the destination cup. All right, so what I need is, I don't actually need the destination cup. I need the index of destination cup. So let me rename this to index of destination. Or I could just name it destination index. That's fine. Uh, and then, so we are uh, placing some elements into an array and modifying that array in place. And I think we can do that with splice as well. So mm -mm -mm, let me see. Let me see. So index of destination cup is uh, so destination cup is is two. So index of two is one, right? That's good. And let's uh, array one splice. Let's name this three cups. So we're gonna need to insert three cups in here, but at a place where, so splice, you can add elements. And so it takes a start parameter, an optional delete count, and then the items you want to start, beginning, uh, you, you want to add into the array, beginning from start. All right. Uh, beginning from start. So I guess beginning from um, index of destination cup. Let's see what that does. Destination cup. Oh, and I need to destructure these because it's going to be. Uh, don't die. Three cups. Spice. I get the three cups there. I think. It's the array. Current cup. Index of current cup. This is, I don't know what this does. Three cups. Let me log three cups. Yep. And current array is, yep. Index of destination cup. So we add three cups. Uh, three, two, five, four, six, seven. Hmm, that's a little bit weird. Let's see. I don't use splice that often to add elements. 
So it takes a start index. So our start index here is one. And this is the array we're working with. So zero, one. So beginning at here, maybe plus one. And then we need to add, oh, it's gonna return whatever it added. So, isn't it? Let's see. Return value, an array containing the deleted elements uh, removed. If no elements are removed, an empty array is returned. So that's what we need to get, an empty array, because we're not removing any elements. Uh, how do we tell splice it shouldn't delete? So delete count is optional. Wait, so maybe I can, oh, zero. Oh, I see. So we don't want to delete any elements. Exactly. So we get an empty array returned, which is fine, because we're not deleting any elements, zero. And then our new array is three, two, eight, nine, one, five, four, six, seven. I think that looks good. Three, two, eight, nine, one, three, two, eight, nine, one, five, four, six, seven, five, four, six. Yep. Exactly what we need. So I'm going to copy this. So I like this way of working that you can just verify that the code does what uh, you're intending it to do. Uh, and you kind of like play the, yeah, play with the code in the playground and then you uh, add it to your program. Um, Cause that'll, that'll save you some, yeah, uh, prevent some bugs later on when you're off by one or stuff like that. So I'm gonna say cups splice. Uh, yep, cups splice, just gonna modify cups in place. Plus one, zero, three cups. Yep. So we added the cups in there. Uh, and then let's go to the um, to the last move of the game. So the crab selects a new current cup. The cup which is immediately clockwise of the current cup. So I guess index of current cup plus one. And then current cup is gonna be that index. And then I plus one. All right, this looks pretty good. Let's run a program and um, see what happens. Node day 23 index.js. Uh, we get an error. We usually do get errors. So index of destination cup is not defined. That's interesting. Did I make a typo? I did make a typo. Yep. So I noticed that when I click on it, it tells me where this variable is used. Uh, VS Code is, has IntelliSense, so it's kind of smart about this. And it doesn't highlight this variable. So this probably has a typo, it's a different variable. Um, so. If I fix that, you can see it's get selected. So, yep. All right, uh, can I read property two of undefined? That's interesting. So current cup, where are we there here? Line 26, here. Oh, okay, yeah, so that's what I forgot. Uh, when we are kind of like, yeah, where we are here, when the current cup is this, and then we the the cup currently or like the cup immediately to the right we reach the end of the array we need to like go back to the beginning of the array so index of current cup is going to be plus plus what we can say is index of current cup is uh, let me see we have cups length I guess, let me think. Let's do it in the playground again. Let's say we have this. So index of current cup is gonna be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Index of current. It's gonna be eight. And our array is gonna be Let's just copy some values from here. Okay. 
there we go 74158392 and then index of current cup is one so it's going to be um new index is going to be index of current cup plus one but we need to say modulo array to length so what's new index nine i guess length minus one oh wait make let's make sure the precedence works Right, so we move the minus one zero okay that makes sense and if it's seven it's gonna be eight all right so it's gonna be the, if it's if it the uh, current cup is this then next cup is gonna be that because that's eight and if the current cup is this then we're going back to the beginning and our uh, next cup is gonna be the first one yep so this is the code we're looking for index of current cup plus one and then cups all right let's give it another spin uh, 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 uh. can we read property two of undefined so i think i'm index of current cup this is working this should be good but then we're still on line 26 we're still trying to access, oh wait, current cup? No, that's silly. Should be cups, right. All right, so no more errors. The code goes on and on for 100 iterations. Um, that's weird. 100 iterations should not take that long. We started one, while I is smaller or equal than a hundred and then I plus plus so when I is 101 we should stop either iterations are taking super long each iteration is taking very long which I highly doubt it because we're not doing anything complicated inside here we're dealing with a smaller rate too or I uh, I'm making a mistake and we are in an uh, stuck in an infinite loop so let's, uh, let me run the debugger really quick. I'm gonna add a breakpoint here and see what I is after each iteration. Let me remove all these expressions. So I is one, I is two, three. What do our cups look like? Um, so we are at I8, move 8, and then uh, our cup should look like this. Well, there's a bug there, so there's another bug I need to fix. But the uh, first bug I'm concerned about is that... Alright, yeah, so it's kind of like gets stuck there. Let me run it again. So I one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, so on our 10 move, on our 10th, what we call this move, yeah. Um, we get stuck in the infinite loop and I guess seeing the infinite loop is here because we don't find the destination cup. I'm gonna do two things. I'm gonna rename I to move. So that we know like move the current move it's better and uh so uh, let me see index of destination cup while there's no index of destination cup find a cup so cups find index cup is equal to current cup i guess let's just add a debugger breakpoint here and we'll go through uh we'll go through the program until move 
9 or like move 10 move 9 does it get stuck on 9 or on 10 on 9 okay so what's uh, what, what is cups looking like uh, 8 1 7 5 3 6 2 4 9 That's weird because cup should be... Okay, let's fix another bug first because... On our first iteration we should have cups... Yeah, it's removed. So, and then here we add... And our three cups is that. 891. We removed 891 from our original cups. And then our index of destination cup is one. That's good. And then we add the cups back in. So it's three, two, eight, nine, one, five, four, six, seven. Three, two, eight, nine, one, five, four, six, seven. Looks good. And then how about I had a breakpoint here? What's the index of current cup? One. Uh, makes sense. And therefore, current cup is two. All right, so in our next iteration, our current cup is going to be two. And our three cups are going to be eight, nine, one, five. So that's where uh, it's a miss. Oh, I see. Because we're now wrapping around this either. So let's wrap this around. Uh, when we are grabbing the last three, so let's say, for example, so in this case, two, uh, so we have our index of current cup is one. Let's play it through this round. So we have our current round here. Let's say um, index of current cup is um, one because we're looking at two as the current cup. And um, the current cup is two. Yeah, that also makes sense. So What happens here? I want to see what happens here. So what does array 3 look like? Um, it should pick up 891. But it's picking up 289, which is, oh wait, wrong variable. It's picking up 891, which is correct. Oh, five, right. That was a bug in here. 8915, we don't need five. Why did it pick up five? I wonder why. I mean, why did it pick up... Um, uh, an extra... Why did it work on the first iteration, but not on the second? That's what I'm gonna figure out. So what Splice does is it picks up the current one, but not including to the end. So plus one, plus two, plus three. This should really be plus four. No. Let, let's see what Splice does better. Oh, I see. Yeah, this should always be three. Because that's the amount of... Yep, okay. 
misunderstood. I thought Splice's second argument was uh, the... I thought the, f the first argument was start, which it was, but I thought the second argument was end. But it wasn't, it was count. And count is always three because we're picking three cups. Uh, and we were now, index of current cup was one, so we're picking four cups. That's our bug. All right, and something else I want to verify. If uh, we are at the end of the array, so let's say index of current cup is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This cup. Then we need to pick up 6, 7, and 3. Alright, so we only pick up 6 and 7. Uh, so we'll need to uh, use mod, perhaps. Because um, if the splice reaches the end of the array, if the lead count, uh, let me see. So, if delete count value is equal to or larger than, than array length minus start, that is, if it is equal to or greater than the number of elements left in the array starting a start, then all elements from start to the end of the array will be deleted. Yeah, but I need to wrap around as well. So, unfortunately, it doesn't do that for us. I wonder if slice does that for us, if I do an end. If end is greater than the length of the sequence, slice extracts through to the end of the sequence. Yeah, it doesn't wrap around either. I don't think there's a method that does that. So, what I could do what I could do is I could approach this two different ways. One way that I'm thinking of is if three cups is not, if the cups that I, that we extracted are not three, so either two or one or zero, then we need to extract some more cups from the beginning of the array, and I can do that with a, with a shift. With a shift, uh, removes the first element in the array. Um, the second uh, approach that we can take here is if index of current cup is I can like figure out if um, if index of current cup is like for this example is six and we know that we have nine elements so nine minus six is gonna be um, well actually this is index eight so eight minus six is gonna be two then we know we can only extract two or like at least two elements are left at the end of the array so therefore 2 is smaller than 3 and therefore we need to shift one element from the beginning. Which is in code looks like similar to what I to the first approach and the first approach is I think easier to code. So I'm going to add it in here. while 3 cups length is smaller than 3 I'm gonna say three cups um, concat cups shift exactly so we're gonna try and remove three elements but in case we don't in case we our index is at here at the end of the array uh, we're gonna remove either two elements one element or perhaps zero elements so in that case, we're going to enter this while loop because we have less than three elements and we're going to remove an element from the beginning of the array and add it to three cups for as long until three cups is equal to three, after which we're going to exit the array, exit the loop. And here we're removing the first cup from the array, we're modifying the array in place because shift modifies an array in place. So that's what we still need. Uh, changes the length of the array, so that's good. And returns the removed element and we add that to three cups, kind of like at the end. Yeah, all right, that should do it. Let's run a program again. 
still stuck in an infinite loop. But uh, that's because we didn't fix our infinite loop. But I think we fixed our... Um, so let's see, three cups is 891, next iteration. Still 891, good. And current cup is two, awesome. Next iteration, three, two, five. So I'm just gonna go. All right, so we are, uh, we have another bug. Instead of three, two, five, instead of four, six, five, we're picking up three, two, five for some reason. So instead of four, six, five, we're picking up three, two, five. Interesting. Uh, what's our um, current cup is one. Is that correct? No. So that's what the problem is. Current cup should be five. Okay. Um, mm -mm. What's the index of current cup is two. Oh, I see. What does cups look like? Right. Uh, wait a second. Let me just go back uh, to the previous. Okay, see, I wanna be here. So here, now we're at the end of move two. So we should end up with these cups, three, two, five, four, six. All right, we didn't end with that those cups for some reason. Uh, I'm gonna just deal with this break. I'm gonna just look at the cups. So three, two, eight, nine, one. Three, two, eight, nine, one, five, four, six, seven. So that looks good. And on the second iteration, all right. So there's a bug. There's a bug in, in where we are adding the three cups back in here oh an index of destination cup is minus one all right I see so a silly bug here if find index does not return an index well if it doesn't find the cup in there it's gonna return minus one which is defined so instead of Undefined, we can say, well, index of um, destination cup is minus one or undefined. So I guess I can just instantiate this to minus one. Yep, that's what we need. All right, so run the program. Still infinite uh, loop, so we haven't fixed that, but I think we should have the, uh, the cup should be good. Uh, so three, okay, next iteration. All right, so our infinite loop is in here. Index of destination cup, well, index of destination cup is equal to minus one, find a cup. It doesn't find our cup, so let's see what's wrong. Okay, so our current cup is two. Index of current cup is one. So this is our uh, current cup index is one and we need to get seven as the destination so we have our cups here all right so uh, let me add a breakpoint here and here so cup is three why Oh yeah, so it's looking at three. So what's the uh, one? Uh, two, two, two. Our current cups. Doesn't really matter, but three. Current cup is two minus one. It's gonna be one modulo 10, one. So three should not equal one. Oh, wait a second. Current cup, yeah, three should not equal one. Nope. Oh, I see what's going on. Got it. I already have the bug. So it's trying to, so current cup is one, uh, is two. And then, so it's trying to look for destination cup one. It doesn't find it. 
therefore it needs to go looking for zero um, or better said because there's no zero bear said nine uh, but we don't do any of that here we don't do any of that here um, so current cup so let's uh, do that uh, cup destination cup is current cup minus one and we need to look for destination cup all right and we when we don't find it destination cup minus minus So we can say, yep. Um, so it's gonna try and look for cup one. And then actually, I can get rid of this. So it's gonna try and look for one. It won't find cup one, so then it's going to try and look for zero, and then it won't find zero, and then it's gonna try and look for minus one, and it'll go into the minus, which we don't need, because, let me see, minus one modulo 10, not a number. Right, so this needs to wrap around. So maybe we can do, 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 do maybe we can do the wrapping around here. Destination cup is destination cup minus one modulo highest cup plus one. Kind of like this. So this is gonna be uh, two, uh, then two minus one is gonna be one modulo. Mm, actually, the, no. We need to keep this. Um, mm, interesting. Okay, we don't need to keep that. Uh, let's, yeah, let's figure out destination cup in here. We're gonna get rid of that. We're gonna figure out what the destination cup needs to be in here. So then we can just say equals to cup. So uh, current cup is two, two minus one is one modulo 10. It's gonna be one. What happens if we do each zero? Zero minus one or one. One minus one is zero, zero modulo 10. It's gonna be zero, it's gonna look for zero. But we don't need that. If it's uh, if it's zero, then it's gonna be minus one. So we need to uh, uh, we cannot go into the negative. We can't go into the negative. We can't go into the negative. All right. So I'm thinking how. If I have a number and I subtract it by a one every single time and then instead of I guess I can have an if condition here that if destination cup is one which means we're gonna do one minus one is gonna be zero then um, destination cup is going to be highest cup minus one otherwise destination cup minus one highest cup a uh, modulo because if yeah so if this is one one minus one is going to be zero there's no zero cup so we need to be looking for nine. So it's gonna be highest cup. Yeah. 
think this should work. Let's give it a try. Uh, so now I fix our infinite loop here. Uh, 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 but this, yeah. So yeah, if destination cup is equal to one, destination cup is highest cup. So then we try to find that one. So we're gonna be have nine here. In the following iteration, it doesn't find nine because we picked up nine in our three cups, so it doesn't exist in our cups array. So then it's gonna go to nine is not equal to nine, one. So therefore nine minus one is eight, eight modulo. Uh, this is, doesn't need to be plus one anymore. Uh, eight modulo nine is eight. So that's good. It should, yeah, it should find our cup. So let's uh, run it with the debugger. Destination cup two. Next, destination cup seven. Yes, it does find it. So then our cups look like three, two, five, four, six, seven. Three, two, five, four, six, seven, eight, nine, one. Okay, looks good. Three, four, six, seven, two, five. Right, this does not look good. Should be seven, two, five. Okay, so where are we wrong? What's our, uh, in the third move, what's our current cup? It's five. Hmm. Oh wait, we're one move ahead. Uh, Aren't we? Yeah, we are, we'll move ahead. So let's add a breakpoint. Um, we're going to add a breakpoint. Current cup, three cups. Find this niche here before we do anything. So this is the first move. Second move. Check and see here. Move two. Okay, we're inside move three. So move three says that we pick up four, six, seven. Four, six, seven, that's good. And our current cup is five and our destination cup is three. Destination cup three, current cup five. Okay. And so our cups for the next iteration are gonna be seven, two, five. So that's where it's going a mess for some reason. And probably because, yeah, I need to fix this. Because, because, um, our destination cup is three. So our destination index is zero. That's good. And um, we want to insert four, six, seven. after three, which is what we're doing, but we're not wrapping around. Oh, so that messes up with our index. I should have foreseen this. Mm, okay, that's gonna complicate a little bit, things a little bit, because to fix this is not that straightforward. So what they're doing here, they're wrapping the array around, which, uh, but wait, that shouldn't really, no. No, that shouldn't make a difference, no. So our array looks like this, but this should be the same as the other array, uh, but written a different way, because it's a circle. So where does their array start? Here, seven, two, five, eight. Seven, two, five, eight, nine, one, three, four, six. Nine, one, three, four, six. Yeah, that's exactly the same array. So let's, um, let's run this for t 10 times, 10 moves, and see the final array. Okay, somewhere we get an infinite loop and I guess maybe there again so I'm gonna keep track of move move one two move three four five six seven Right, so at move seven, we get an infinite loop. So let's see what's going on. Um, 
can I add a conditional breakpoint? That would be awesome. Uh, but no. Uh, let's see. Here, somewhere in here where I'm not finding. Okay. Okay, so let's go to move seven, three, four, five, six. That's interesting. Uh, so we'll move one, two, Okay, let's step over. Uh, how about step into? No, step out, step out. Move three, step out. Move four. Move five. So we're move move six. Our cups are. This, the three cups we picked up is two, five, one, so move six. We should have picked different cups. Oh, why is this a heart? Okay. We're picking up three cups. Well, cups length is maybe something is wrong here. Maybe it is. So let's. Uh, uh, uh. I guess move six. Yeah, move six should pick up three, six, seven. Let's first make sure the cups look all right. So three, two, eight, nine, one, five, four, six, seven. I think the second move was good too. And the third move, move three. How do our cups look for move five, move four, seven, two, five, eight, seven, two, five, eight, nine, one, three, four, nine, one, three, four, six. Okay. Next, um, three, two, five, eight. Okay, so that's what's wrong. Three, two, five, eight. And we add up with three, four, six, two. All right, I guess because it's wrapping around, our bug is somewhere in there, yeah. Okay, it's a circle. <clears throat> um. mm -mm -mm. I'm gonna go, go to the third move, and then I'm going to see our three cups are four, six, seven. And we inserted them after three. So current cup is destination cup is three. Index of three. So what do we have now? Three, four, six, seven. Oh, I went one too far. It's already bugged. I wanna go before the bug. Move one, move two. So move to um, destination cup. Let me add a break point here actually. Move three, okay. So the three cups we picked up are four, six, seven. Right, and then our current cups are three, two, five, eight, nine, one, three, two, five, eight, nine, one. Yeah, our destination cup is uh, three, and the index of that cup is zero. So we're about to insert four, six, seven after three. Three. 
three, four, six, seven. And then we're gonna have two, five, eight, nine, one. Uh, isn't that what happens? So let me add another breakpoint here. So what does the current cup look like? Three, four, six, seven. Three, four, six, seven. Two, five, eight, nine, one. Two, five, eight, no. One. So that looks good. Mm, and then for the next move, our destination cup is six, which isn't right. It should be seven. Our current cup is eight. Current cup is seven. All right, so that's where it's going wrong because I'm gonna go back. Gonna go back to move three. So it's picking up current cup seven instead of eight. Uh, let me see why. Because in oh, because the index modifies right. I see. Yeah, when we add when we add our three cups into the array, index of destination cup is not what it used to be. <laughs> Uh, this modifies as well so maybe what if we what if we do this before we add it and then we do this we get the current cup before we actually modify the array maybe that will fix our bugs let's run the program it did fix the bug. Awesome. Is that the answer? After 10 times? Not really. 5, 8, 3, 7, 4. Is it 5, 3? No. But we're a step further. We don't have the infinite loop anymore. So we fixed that bug. So we would, yeah. Instead of what we did is we modified the area in place. And then we kind of like grab the current cup and here, but the array is already modified. So index of the destination cup doesn't really work anymore. Um, and I need to use destination cup here instead of current cup. Another bug found. So many bugs. All right. Uh, five, eight, four. Five, eight, three, seven, four. Five, eight, four, six. Okay, still doesn't work. Uh, unbelievable such a small piece of code so many bugs in here um, so index of destination cup we found our destination cup and then we say plus one get the next cup but wrap around wrap around index of current cup therefore current cup is um, the cup at that index all right and then we add the three cups after we have our current cup for the next iteration we add the three cups these three cups in there where do we add them we add them after the destination Okay, so current cup is gonna be immediately clockwise of, of uh, current cup. Oh, wait a second. So I did make a mistake. This wasn't a bug, okay. Immediately after current cup, the crab selects a new current cup, the cup which is immediately clockwise of the current cup. Index of current cup, plus one, go around. Oh, but it does that after we add the, doesn't it? So for example here, 
six. Oh, I see. In our program, uh, because we picked up seven, four, and one, uh, the next cup is going to be five in our program, but the actual cup should be. Well, actual cup is actual destination is five. The current cup is the next one because we added after it. No, yeah, that should that shouldn't mess up with our program. Not really. Uh, index of current cup plus one. Grab the current cup and then insert the cups at the destination. Uh, maybe perhaps. Three. So current cup is three A and then. Yeah, I think it still messes up though because. Here, for example, let me see. Pick up eight nine one. It's not eight nine one. So somewhere in here. Is there? I'm trying to look for an instance where the cups that we picked up in the previous move is gonna. One of those cups is gonna be the current cup in the next move. Because if that's the case, then our program is buggy there. Because in our program, this can never be the case. Three six seven two no five eight three six no nope, seven four one five no nope, no. So that does not happen. Hmm. Okay, I'll just have to go to the program again uh, and. I'm gonna add this to the watch variables. I'm gonna add cups to the watch variables. And I'm gonna add move to the watch variables. So then I can see them over here. Uh, lots of debugging in today's, uh, today's advent of code. Not a lot of program, not a lot of code, but a lot of bugs, unfortunately. All right, so we have our Three cups in the first move is uh, eight nine one. Let me add a breakpoint here instead. Okay, eight nine one three two five four. Eight nine one. Uh, so let's say we also need our destination cup and our current cup. And we need to, because we, we modify the current cup in here. Let's add a breakpoint before we do that. All right, move one. Destination cup, two, current cup, three. Two, three, and our array looks like uh, this. Two, five, four, six, seven. With three as well, and eight, nine, one, two. All right, looks good. Next, uh, we have Current cup is two and destination will be seven. Two, seven, that's good. We picked up eight, nine, one. Eight, nine, one, uh, so that looks good. Uh, move three, five, three. Current cup five, destination three. We picked up four, six, seven. Looks good, let's go to four. Four, current cup is eight, destination seven. Eight seven, we picked up nine one three. Oh, we picked up two five eight. We picked up the wrong cups. Um, we picked up two five, which ones? Two five eight. That's weird. We picked up a destination cup. That's a bug altogether. So, um, you cannot pick a destination cup. How come we have a destination cup that's being picked up? That's weird. Three cups, two, five, eight. Destination cup is seven. Oh no, wait, seven. Okay. Uh, no, but we um, we picked up a we picked up uh, a current cup, which cannot happen either. We should be picking up 
the cups after the current cup. Uh, index of current cup plus one. Oh, because we modify. Hmm, this modifying array in place really messes up with us, because it's. I mean, according to reading to the, according to the puzzle, it's it's useful to modify the array in place because you don't need to deal with the, the spacing being removed and the wrapping around and stuff. But it does mess up with our indexes. So in this case. Index of current cup, we grab the current cup and then we modify the array in place. But then the three cups, maybe, maybe I do this at the end as well. Well, no, I cannot do that. So I need to, um, I kind of need to know what the three cups in the next move are going to be like before I add them, before I add them. So we're at move four here and we picked up the wrong cups. Let's, um, let's go to move three before it happens. Before it happens. Um, so current cup for the next move is going to be 8 and index of current cup is 3 0, 1, 2, 3 but we haven't had it we haven't added the cups yet Oh, this logic is so flawed. Um, go in here. And uh, index of current cup 3. So it's saying current cup is 8. So therefore, index of current cup is 3. 0, 1, 2, 3. What does cups look like? Here. Three, four, six. Three, four, six. No, we didn't add the cups in the correct order. So maybe that's our bug is going back. I wish you could go back with the debugger instead of having to start a new move three. Okay, so before we add the cups, so we have move three, we add we have four, six, seven. We have our destination cup is three. Index of destination cup is zero. Uh, is that so? Three. Three is at zero. That's correct. So we add four, six, seven after three. Oh, wait a second. Oh no, wait. Yeah. So by changing this around, we introduced another bug. We fixed one, but introduced another one. So, um, we need the index of current cup. Oh no, we didn't, because it's destination cup. Okay. Um, plus one. We picked up four, six, seven. And current cup is 5, destination is 3. Well, we're already at the current cup for the next one, so that doesn't matter. We don't do anything with that. And uh, destination cup is 3. But the weird thing is that our ray, we picked up 4, 6, 7. Our ray should be 3, 2, 5, 8, 9, 1. 3, 2, 5, 8, 9, 1. That's correct. And then we add uh, 
uh, here's three so we add four six seven after three and then we have two five eight nine one So in here we add three cups. Three, four, six, seven, two, five, eight, nine, one. Three, four, six, seven, two, five, eight, nine, one. Yeah, that, that's actually looking good. Uh, I forgot that our uh, it's a circle <laughs> and that our ray wraps around. Okay, but then on the next iteration. Oh, I see. So it's a circle. This index, mm, 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 mm. current cup eight, index of current cup three. Is that so? No, it's not three. Index of current cup changed. So maybe I need to do a index of current cup is to find the current cup again because I need to make sure the index of current cup is correct before I get a new array. Yeah. So how about I have do that here? Um, get the new current cup index. Yep. That's what I need to do. And I can do that at the end. Maybe that's better. Here, after I modify this array. Cups find index. Cup. Cup equals. Wait. Cup triple equals to uh, current cup. Alright. This should get our. This should fix our bug. Because we have a new current cup, so let's go to move three where this is all happening. So we have three, four, six, seven, two, five, eight, nine, one. Three, four, six, seven, two, five, eight, nine, one. That's correct. And our current cup is eight, and the index of current cup is six. Exactly six because eight is uh, on the sixth index. So then the three cups we pick up On the next iteration is Nine one. Well, wait a second. We need to add a few more here. So let's go here three cups is what? Infinite loop, All right? Because um, we're modifying our array in place here as well, and that messes up where our index is. Unbelievable! Everything is messing up. Yeah, it's. I, I was. It's a bit silly to assume that when you're modifying an array in place, that the indexes is going to be the same. They're not. So whenever you modify, so whenever I'm modifying an array in place here, I need to make sure that I I kind of like recalculate the indexes. Okay. That's the trick of our uh, puzzle for today. So uh, again, index of current cup, that might have changed. We need to do a find. And All right, and then here destination cup, we get current cup, it's gonna be okay. And then, all right, that's all right. Um, but this one, yeah, this one is gonna be reused here. So that's good. And then, so when, we're, when are we modifying the array in place here in these two places, splice and shift? 
and then we're recalculating the index which we will use and then here as well and here we're calculating the index and that's the only index we care about because destination cup we get it here and then we use it here but anywhere in between we're not <clears throat> modifying the array so destination cup is not going to change the index all right let's run the program still an infinite loop somewhere <laughs> Index of current cup plus one, three, get three cups. If there's not three cups in there, remove a cup from the beginning <clears throat> until you have three cups. And then the index has shifted, of course. So index of current cup is going to be cup is equal to current cup. Find index. And... Uh, And then destination cup we find the index of destination cup <clears throat> as well and then what we're doing here is grabbing the next current cup next current cup um, which is index of current cup plus one modulo cups length before we add the three <laughs> cups in there yeah index of current cup and then that cup is going to be this And then we add them in there. Um, so what happens is we have our cups in here. Current cup uh, three, destination cup two. We remove these ones. Now what we first do is Yeah, we first remove the three cups after the current cup. Then we find our destination cup in the remaining cups, which is two. Let's go through the rules again and see if I missed something. The crab picks up three cups that are immediately clockwise of the current cup. They are removed from the circle. Cup spacing is just necessary to maintain the circle. So that's what happens here. We have our cups and we grab the three to the right of the index of current cup index of current cup plus one remove them and if we reach if we didn't reach the end of the array we remove from the beginning so kind of like here if we are here we get three six and seven and then we add seven to the to the end so that's what concat does concat adds a um, an element to merge two more arrays the method does not change the existing arrays but instead returns a new array oh was that it Oh, that might have been it. So silly. I thought concat modified 
Oh, silly boy, I can't believe I spent so much time solving this. Yeah, Concord does not modify anything in place, it returns the new array and I need it to assign it to three cups. Otherwise it doesn't do anything. So it goes into an infinite loop here. Oh, so silly. Alright, so uh, we have an answer. 926, is that the answer? 926. 58374. 58374. Yes. Alright. Looking good. Part one is nearing its uh, it looks like we're gonna uh, we're one step closer to finishing part one, but not there yet. So after a hundred moves, so after ten moves we get the correct answer. But a hundred moves uh, we do not. We get eight four five two nine, eight four five two nine. Okay, so the, the 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 cups are looking good. It's something with our with our logic in here. Something with our logic in here. Um, I guess. Let me see. Index of one. So our cups is this. Our final cups look like this. Two nine one. Put it here, two nine one six seven. And then index of one is two. So what needs to happen is it needs to be six, seven, three, eight, four, five. Six, seven, three, eight, four, five. And then two nine. So I think this is what that does, if I'm not mistaken. At a break point there. Where are we in our breakpoint? Oh, we went over it. So, okay, let me just copy this value and paste it in our playground. And then we're gonna final labels. And then we're gonna use that. construct an array uh, cups this is cups and index of one is const Still not working. Cups, uh, slice, join, mix of one. Maybe because. Not sure what. Why is it complaining? So this is our final state. Right, cups. We got cups in here. Let's remove this. Uh, cups in here. Slice. Cups length. I'm not. Am I? I have a variable name collision. Nope. And then index of one. I guess I have index of one here. Right. Index of one two. All right. So okay, we have reproduced our bug in here. And. So cups, what happens here? Five. Why five? Why is five hard coded? That should be index of one, no? Yeah. Okay. Silly. Oh, there's still not the. Oh, is it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Okay. Uh, a lot of silly bugs today. Hmm. Maybe I'm not that sharp anymore for some reason. It's taken too long. I have enough code. It's 
taking so all right um, let's run the program with our own input and see what the result is uh, we get this one so submit yeah we solved the first part uh, Siberian you can do dot push uh, items uh, so Siberian lumberjack suggests to do that push are you referring to to uh, are you referring to kind of like add the uh, is it this part that you're referring to or something in the uh, in the beginning in the in the logic up top the concat oh yeah push yeah Push modifiers in place. Yeah, correct, correct. And I think I can also um, can I push at? Uh, it's gonna add them at the end of the array. I need to add them at the beginning though. So I guess you mean uh, I guess you mean not pop, push, shift, slice, splice, unshift, unshift. Splice can remove and insert arbitrary amount of items. Uh, yeah. True. Yeah, I can do uh, unshift. And that's going to work as expected, I think. Yeah. Uh, I get a different answer, though. Three cups, unshift. Adds one more element to the beginning of an array, returns the new length. One, two, three, unshift, four, five, four, five at the beginning. Oh, but I need to, yeah. All right, yeah, that's, uh, it's gonna add them in reverse order, which I don't want, which I do not want. I need to add them at the end. So maybe uh, uh, push is uh, actually what you, uh, maybe you, yeah. I think you meant uh, that's yeah push yeah same answer same answer so that does it yeah yeah so instead of concat you uh, could have used push and then it's the same thing yep that was a silly mistake all right let's go on to part two yay we did part one Oof. that was uh, two uh, we took two hours uh, to fix all these bugs in this small uh, program all right, part two is gonna be for sure more complicated. So let's get to it. I'm gonna drink some water. Uh, yeah, I could reverse and shift as well. True, but I think this is uh, uh, this is cleaner. Push. Yeah, I'm gonna stick to using push. All right. Uh, due to what you can only assume is a mistranslation, you're not exactly fluent in crab. Uh, you are quite surprised when the crab starts arranging many cups in a circle on your raft. One million in total. Your labeling is still correct for the first few cups. After that, the remaining cups are just numbered in an increasing fashion starting from the number after the highest number in your list and proceeding one by one until one million is reached. Uh, my phone is out of battery. I'm gonna plug it in. All right. Uh, so our labeling, our so the cups that we start with is uh, we you're starting with a million cups, and um, so your labeling is still correct for the first few cups. After that, the remaining cups are just numbered. In an increasing fashion, starting from the number after the highest number in your list and proceeding one by one until one million is reached. For example, if your labeling were 54321, the cups would be numbered 5431, and then start counting up from six until one million is reached. What? In this way, every number from one through one million is used exactly once. After discovering where you made the mistake in translating crab numbers, you realize the small crab isn't going to do merely 100 moves. The crab is going to do 10 million moves. All right. So this, um, mm -hmm. I'm suspecting we'll uh, have to be smarter about how we uh, do the moves because we not only have significantly more cups, but also significantly more moves. 
and our current program is probably going to take too long uh, to go through all those moves so we'll have to optimize it the crab is going to hide your stars no our stars one each under the two cups that will end up immediately clockwise of cup one so let me see so the crab is going to hide your stars one each under the two cups that will end up immediately clockwise of cup one okay so you can have them if you pre predict what the labels on those cups will be when the crab is finished in the above example three eight nine one two five four six seven this example this would be nine three four zero zero one and then one five nine seven nine two multiplying these together oh I see so after one cup one this is the cup after cup one and this is the cup after this this cup and you multiply those together and you get a result and that's gonna be the answer for part two determine which two cups will end up immediately clockwise of cup one what is the product of those two cups interesting all right, so first we'll need to change our input. With a we'll, we'll need to add those million cups. So we have our cups over here. We need to, we need to have a fresh copy. We need to have a fresh copy. So I'm going to add this to the top. Oh, uh, maybe not. Oh, uh, maybe yes. I'm going to add this to the top as well because we're going to need to reuse it in part two. And then Then in here we're gonna work with the copy of cups so let me rename this to first cups and this is gonna be cups and it's gonna be a copy of first cups so then this is gonna work fine and I'm gonna wrap this in an immediately invoking function uh, function execution so that we don't have a um, collision of scope between parts one and two. All right, I'm gonna do the same for the second part. All right. So then we have another variable called cups here and we need to it's going to be a copy of parsed cups thanks for that suggestion Siberian Lumberjack fusing push here appreciate it um, and the highest cup is now 9, so while well, highest cup, I'm gonna modify highest cup uh, I need a new variable cup yeah let's say new highest cup we're gonna start with assigning with the highest cup and then we're gonna say um, well new highest cup do, 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 do. new highest cup is smaller uh, or equal to 1 million
cups push. That should take care of our array, of our labels, yeah, of our cups. How many? One million? Let's just make sure. Add a console log here for just so I can add a breakpoint. I think I introduced a bug in our code. Cups is not defined. Right. Okay, works. So, two, 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 two. we have our cups. It's, uh, we have one million and one elements though. And we should end up with one million, right? So, yeah, it should be smaller than, instead of equal, rerun. All right, one million elements. And the first few ones are Nine, six, two, whatever is in here. And then we go on with 10, 11, 12, 13, and so on. Good. That works correctly. So maybe let's, uh, let's use our example input. Let's work with our example input. All right, so we uh, dealt with that. We have a bunch of cups. And what else? Um, your labeling is still correct for the first few cups. After that, doo -doo -doo. okay, so we did that. So um, the crab isn't gonna do a hundred moves, but it's gonna do a million, no, ten million moves. All right. So and then after this, we'll deal with that, but. I guess I can already write the code for the final thing, so I can just say const index of one. It's gonna be cups find cup cup equals to one. I can just copy this. And um, Our answer is going to be the two numbers after cup one multiplied together. So we can say console log answer part two uh, cups index of one plus one multiplied index of one plus two. Yeah, that's gonna be the answer for part two uh, when we have figured out what the final cups are gonna look like arranged. Okay, so we, we could copy paste this just for fun. <laughs> and run the program and let's... Uh, See, run a program not a hundred times but ten thousand ten thousand hundred thousand million ten million and I'm gonna add a console log uh, to kind of like follow the program as it goes and see what the speed is probably it's super slow uh, if console log nope not if console log if I mod, let's uh, log every 100,000 iteration. Um, yeah, right. All right, move. We got rid of the I, let's move. So it even takes a long time to compute it a hundred thousand times, let's say a thousand. Nope. 
how about 100? What? Is it that slow? 10. Did I make a bug here or something? So if I just console log move, it's super, s oh, it got, it's not slow per se. It got to an infinite loop. And after the sixth move, on the seventh move, I thought that shouldn't happen because we found the correct answer for the first part. So there shouldn't be a bug in the way we do things here. Hmm. That's interesting. <laughs> you also tried to copy paste the solution from part one. Did you finish uh, the second part? Did you manage to finish it? To solve it? Uh, I wonder why we get an infinite loop. I thought we fixed our... Maybe it was not an infinite loop. Maybe like the shifting and stuff takes a lot of time. So... Maybe... Yeah, maybe like finding finding a uh, maybe here. This takes a long a lot a lot of time. Maybe let's add. Maybe that's what takes longer time. Yeah, finding uh, the cup. Okay. So that kind of like gives us a clue where we can optimize. Um, looking at this array, so when, whenever you do anything performing wise and you know it's gonna take 10 million times, um, you need to look at every operation and consider, keep in mind that that operation is gonna run 10 million times. So small amount of times can will quickly add up if you multiply it by 10 million times. So uh, with that in mind, uh, we go line by line and see what takes a lot of time. Splice could take a lot of time. Um, yeah, splice is something that could be, uh, could take quite a while with a large array. And then, but this is just gonna go three times, so that's fine. Uh, find index, we're kind of an inefficient here, we find an index twice. But find index should be relatively quick too. But we know, we know that we're stuck here. So here, um, what's the logic here? We have our current cup. And we, um, we subtract the current cup by one, which gives our destination cup. And then we try to find the destination cup inside the array. If we don't find it, we subtract another one and then we try to find it again and so on. And I think We can be smarter about this. We know we know that our array has a million numbers, and the destination cup has to be in there. But it's either in whatever it's left. It's either in the three cups we left we picked up, or in whatever is left over. So we can. We can optimize this by saying if uh, if three cups includes destination cup, then we know that it's not going to be in the uh, in our current array. So we can like say continue.
Wait, something that I don't understand is index of destination cup is minus one, current cup, destination cup is that. Okay, so I'm gonna move this to the top and I'm gonna add this logic in here. Yep. So we calculate destination cup, and if destination cup is in the, the three cups we just picked up, then obviously we're not gonna find it. So we continue to the next destination cup below that. All right? So that's um, one performance improvement. I don't think it's uh, gonna solve it. So we're still stuck at move seven. Um, well, this is gonna this is gonna improve our lookup by slightly because we're doing we're skipping a few iterations, but then it should find it. So maybe find index. Maybe this particular thing takes a long time. So let's say uh, I'm gonna say before. Find and after find. I want to see if the code is stuck in here. Um, how do I? I need to add uh, something to it. Uh, okay, yeah, destination cup. Destination cup. What is it doing? What? Minus eight. Okay, I need to fix that. Actually, any allocation this many times is gonna cost a lot. Um, <clears throat> which location are you referring to? Here? When we find the index? Or you just mean here, you mean? Like just uh, grabbing uh, three elements from a huge array and then assigning that to three to another Uh, Risok, no, I don't speak Russian if that's what you are uh, asking. I used to speak it a long time ago, but um, I uh, don't speak it anymore. Every time you splice or shift new allocation. Oh, well, you two guys speak Russian, that's nice. Um, so, uh, every time you splice or shift new allocation, yeah. All right, so mm -mm -mm. thinking out loud here. Th that might be our second bottleneck, but first let's fix this bottleneck. And for some reason we get to minus eight, so I need to fix that. I need to, uh, why is it even going to minus eight? It should be, I guess I can say not equal to one, but smaller or equal to one. Gotcha. All right, so we're now going to minus again, but this is taking a lot of time. I wonder why though. Hmm, that's weird. Why isn't, it should find it relatively, relatively quickly. Maybe I add move in here as well. All right, yeah. Um, so yeah, this uh, little optimization here did not do much. Um, okay, back to our drawing board. So what's, uh, let me think. <clears throat> we need to find patterns. We need to find patterns and uh, we need to skip a bunch of iterations. So we don't have to go through all 10 millions of those. Um,
uh, uh, um. so I'm going to do, 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 maybe I can add a debug point breakpoint here so our cups is it's a huge array um. there is some kind of kind of pattern that reoccurs every time because these are these are numbers that are in, in congruent numbers and I think uh, 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 so let's uh, do, 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 maybe maybe I can copy the value of this no okay let's see if I can if we can spot a pattern happening in here All right so Jeez, that took a long time. One iteration. Hmm. Okay, so we go forward, go backwards. What's um what's current cup eleven? And uh, okay, so therefore destination cup is gonna be ten. And then current cup is 15. Destination cup is gonna be 14. Current cup 19. 23. 27. So there's a pattern I'm aging there. Current cup uh, goes uh, increments with four. Interesting. Uh, and then we have 3, 32, 33, 34, 4, 24, 25, 26, 6, 7, 36, 37, 38, 9. Ooh, that's interesting. That's really interesting. For some reason, um, the single digit kind of like follows after the second digit in the uh, 44, 45, 46, and then 7. 36, 37, 38, 9. Well, not everywhere, not here. Um, yeah, not everywhere. But the current cup is incremented by 4 every time. Um, Interesting. All right. Um, I'm not good at maths. So either there's a mathematical equation that you can use for these type of problems that you can just feed it in and it's going to tell you like it's going to have, it's going to grab the uh, one parameter is going to be the amount of labels you have, amount of cups. And another parameter is going to be the number of moves. And that equation kind of like can come up with uh, the final labeling. Or there isn't one. And what if, wait, we only care about cup one. Where is our cup one going to? Cup one is here. Okay. Uh, and then it moves three spaces down up and then it moves another three spaces up 26 all right another no not another three so it stays in the same spot and then it goes three up three up and now it should stay in the same spot again yep and then three up Ooh, we found the pattern and then another three up. Oh no, it stops again. Okay, so there, 
So there's there's a pattern with how one moves throughout the throughout the array. There is a pattern. So I'm gonna have to think about that. Um, <clears throat> How long does it take to complete one mission having a code? Uh, if by one mission you mean like a day, a day, it depends. Um, <clears throat> for me, it took an average of, in the beginning, uh, completing a day was around an hour, an hour and a half. But as the event progresses, the days got more and more difficult. So now by day 23, um, it takes me around three hours to finish them. Or the last few days were a bit easier. It took me two, two and a half hours. Uh, but uh, I got, I had, some days were exceptional, it took me more than three hours, so I couldn't finish them within the stream, uh, but other days took about, yeah, I would say about three hours, and if you have a few days that are more complicated than what you would expect, those can take uh, up to five, maybe six hours, uh, at least for me. Some people, I mean, people in the leaderboards uh, that get to the leaderboard, these folks up here, uh, they finish it in five minutes, uh, 30 minutes. Uh, these these uh, folks are really competitive and are uh, have a lot of experience under their belt. But for me, it takes me several hours. Uh, so Siberian Lumberjack suggests there's no math involved, just an optimization problem. Mm. Yeah, <clears throat> exactly. So I'm going to run the debug debugger again I'm gonna look at one now um, wait if I what if I'm smart if I just say uh, 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 const index of one uh, cups <clears throat> find cup cup equals one so I'm gonna add a breakpoint here. Index of one is one. But mm, find index. Right, index of one is three. Three goes to four. Let me, I should maybe write it down somewhere. Three, four, eight. Eight, five goes back. I think the first few iterations is gonna go, it's gonna go back a little bit, but then it goes, keeps going forward. Eight. This is really uh, like a not smart way of doing this, <laughs> but uh, I'm hoping it's gonna give me some clues in uh, what I need to look for. 17, 20, 20, 20, 23. So 20 repeats two times more, 23, and then 26, 26, 26, maybe it's a few, uh, no, not Fibonacci, 29, 32, <sighs> okay, let's go a few more, And just a few more, 41, 41, 44. Okay, I'm gonna stop here. Um, <clears throat> so this is because, uh, this kind of going a bit back and forth because we, we still have like different numbers there, but because we are uh, entering in the area that it's congruent numbers, it's uh, not gonna go below eight anymore. So it just keeps going forward and it goes forward by 
three and then waits a few steps. So in this case, he waits, skips one and then goes four by three again, skips one, go four by three, skips two, go four by three, skips one, four by three, skips one, four by three, skips two, four by three. Uh, and here he goes for there's there's some pattern there for sure. Um, I look like Edward Norton. I don't know who that is, but I'll uh, I'll take it. Uh, so Siberian lumberjack says. Uh, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> oh, you got into top 100 twice. Actually, nice. Congratulations. That's pretty cool. Nice. Uh, very nice. Congratulations. That's awesome. Um, I, I did not, I'm not doing this competitively, so, uh, I'm not even able to, uh, so that's that just, oh, there's some bad in there. Hmm. I care about one. Huh. I'm gonna be thinking what's what's the pattern here that we can optimize for because what I'm assuming is that instead of do going through each iteration 10 million times we could skip I think a bunch of iterations if we know what a pattern looks like Or if we know what the pattern looks like, we can just say, hey, that pattern is gonna repeat itself for however many times, therefore one is gonna end up at that position. So there's a pattern, but um, eyes moving forward. Ooh, maybe the pattern is in fact that the three cups the, maybe the pattern isn't... Oh, maybe I need to look at the cups. One, four, 104, 105, 106. So those are three cups. And our uh, destination cup, let's uh, add a breakpoint to do, 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 just before, before do, do this. Our, so we have our three cups here and then destination cup is seven so we kind of like we're grabbing elements to, oh, we're grabbing three cups and we're moving them to the beginning and that's how one shifts forward by three makes sense because we uh, we get three cups every on every iteration but sometimes one does not move forward because we add the three cups after one not before In which case, index of one is uh, lower than index of destination cup. Uh, mm -mm -mm. And then, so what I want to look at is I want to look at current cup as well. Current cup is 107. Current cup always moves forward. 111, 115. That's always going to go forward until at least we reach the end of the array. Um, so that's a pattern for sure. So current cup, where is it that we... Maybe in here I don't need to find... Because we do, what do we do? We do, to get the current cup, we say index of current cup plus one, and then the modulo. Yeah, this is pretty fast upper these two are fast operations and uh, yeah these two are fast operations so there's no optimizing there at least uh, getting the destination cup is uh, 
is something that Ooh, destination cup is one. Oh, I see what's happening. Current cup is 119. We're like taking three cups and we add them before one, but sometimes we, one is, so let's see destination cup, one, five, nine, four, eight, three, seven, one, one comes back, five, nine, four, eight, hey! The destination cups are repeating. Three, seven, two, six, one. I'm gonna write that down. Um, so it's one, five, one, five, nine. I think this might be the order in which our current, that we started with, maybe. Four, eight, three, seven, Two, and then we're back to one. No, then we have six, and then we're back to one. Okay, so there's a there's a pattern there in the destination cups. Um, one, five, nine, four, eight, three, seven, two, six. What's our input? One, one, All right, I can't make anything out of this, but I do know that at some point after the first few iterations, kind of like around here, around here, one keeps going up, the position of one. So we reach kind of like an equilibrium, which is this pattern of destination cups. One, five, nine, four, eight, three, seven, two, six. So if we know the destination cup, we don't need to look it up anymore. If you find a pattern for the destination cup, we can just use that pattern instead of doing all the looks up lookups. So we could optimize this, I guess. Not sure if that's gonna do it though, because we do we have a find index here which is not quick. Uh, this is just for debugging. Um, we have another find index here, but maybe, uh, maybe, yeah, maybe that's gonna... If I run the program again, yeah, so it goes through them. I'm gonna add a, uh, if uh, so, if I you know, move modulo, let's log every every thousand times that every thousand iterations. All right. Thousand, two thousand, three thousand, four thousand. It's kind of like one per second. So. Um, the current execution time of our program is going to be 10 million divided by thousands because we take one second for every thousand iterations. So that's that many seconds, which is in minutes is this, which is in hours, just under three hours. Um, so we need to speed this up significantly if we all right let's see um let's see how much faster the program runs if we instead of looking up if we use a pattern for uh, destination cup 
Uh, I would like to ask you, Rizok, uh, if you don't mind, keep the chat in English uh, so that other folks as well can uh, can follow the chat, jump in the discussion or whatnot. Otherwise, uh, we want to avoid having uh, a conversation between you two that nobody will understand or be able to, uh, to have uh, contribute to. Would appreciate it. Um, all right, so maybe try and use the pattern. Um, of course, you're also free to just talk to each other in Russian outside of the chat, uh, but not in the chat, please. Uh, 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 um. So this is our pattern here. Well, I can't hard, I can't uh, hard code that pattern. But I can, what I can do is I can look into the cups array <clears throat> and uh, I can look at um, one. So one is going to be here, that's right. Um, five. I think we're starting at five, aren't we? Three, three, four, six, seven, nine, one. Did I miss three, four? Did I miss five? Oh, because we picked up... Uh... No, we did not. Where's five? Seven, nine. Oh, they moved up here? Okay, they moved up here. Um... So our pattern is like, Three and a bunch of numbers. Four, a bunch of numbers. Six, seven, nine. Uh, uh, um, this is definitely a tough one. Oh yeah, thanks for uh, informing uh, me about that, um, Siberian Lumberjack, I like your name. <laughs> uh, yep, um, so let's see, our current cup is... Uh, is a big number, but our destination cup is one. So one is here. So index of one is 95. So index of destination cup is 95. And then index of I'm gonna add breakpoint oh, here and then we have 137 which follows 5 76 which is 9 19 which is 4 165 for 8 so what I'm trying to figure out is that I know the pattern for my own input, but the input can change. So I cannot just hard code the pattern. It needs to be a program that's gonna work for any type, uh, for any input. 
So for this input, I know the pattern, but that pattern, these numbers are placed at at specific indexes. Um, what I could do is I, I'm thinking of, I could keep a log of previous destination cups. And when I find a cup that is like repeating, I could, let me do that perhaps really quick. Destin previous destination cups. It's an empty array and I'm gonna Concat. Where do I get destination cup? All right, so I'm gonna add it here. Concat destination cup. All right, let's run the program again. I'm gonna look at destination previous destination cups in here. Uh, what it's same mistake again. We need to use push. All right, so we have two, seven, three, seven, nine, nine, eight, one. Our pattern might start here. One. Nine, no, didn't start there. Four, nine, eight, four, one, four. Uh, this is weird. We should get our pattern anytime soon. Um, that's weird. Why don't we get our pattern? Oh wait, I I messed up the input. Let's not mess up with our input. Let's add a pattern here because that's the input the program is working on. Okay, rerun. Um, why does it error out? Why is there an error? Okay, so okay, so we're using input two. That's correct. Uh, we have a breakpoint here. It never reaches that breakpoint. Why? Why doesn't it break here? That's very weird. The program runs correctly. There's no error, but the debugger quits. And usually that happens when there's an error error in the program. And for some reason, Okay, so it doesn't quit anymore. Uh, let's, and now with this breakpoint. Okay, good. Uh, back to our debugging. Uh, previous destination cups. Let's see if we start spotting our pattern. One, here it is. One, five, nine. So we are getting into our pattern on our fourth move. So we have one five nine four a three seven two six 
and then we get one again and then we continue repeat our pattern um, all right so if I keep um, if I keep a previous record a log of the previous destination cups I could like say two seven three seven one five nine four eight so as soon as, as soon as I spot a repeating pattern one five one followed by five followed by one but how long is that pattern? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So the pattern is uh, nine cups long, which is our initial cup length. So as soon as I find a pattern that is nine, uh, yeah, that is nine long. So I'll have to go until eight, three, seven. So for example, here right now, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Wait, two more, I guess. Two, six. So what I do is I could slice, I could take the last nine elements of the, the cups, so previous destinations, I take the last nine, and I look if this last nine we uh, have appeared before in the same in the same sequence if they have then we found our pattern and we maybe have another variable that is going to be our pattern let's destination destination pattern this is going to be an array of that pattern we found the pattern, we view, and then we push it there, and then we ha when we have a pattern, we can reuse that. We can uh, reuse that instead of this. So we can say, if there's a destination pattern, then uh, destination pattern, then use the pattern. Otherwise, uh, else, we're gonna have, uh, wait, we're gonna have the old, old school way of finding our destination. Kind of like this. And so, um, let me see. Uh, destination pattern, and the pattern is gonna be, I guess, Uh, well, first, let me let's 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 um, let's do something with our destination pattern. So we'll need to whenever we find a destination, we add it into our log. So that's what we're doing here, and then we need to. We need to grab last and it needs to be the length of the cups, our initial cups, which is kind of like the, just the highest cup. Yeah, the highest cup is going to be our length. I get or can we assume that? Not sure if we can assume that. Uh, parse cups length, we just do that. Uh, cost last uh, let's just say pattern length or it doesn't really matter so I'm gonna have previous destination cups I'm gonna grab the last elements how do I do that with slice if start is a negative it starts from the end A negative indicating offset from the end of the sequence. Slice two minus two extracts the last two elements in the sequence. 
So uh, I'm going to say slice minus uh, parsed cups length. So this should grab the last nine in this case because we're starting with nine cups from uh, so we can name this pattern from our cups and we can end this pattern and then if pattern repeats itself we need to modify this in place mm, well okay programming problem I have an array and I need to extract the last x elements of that array and we're gonna get a new array and I need to figure out if that new array uh, or that sequence of elements um, appear again in whatever is left over. Interesting programming problem. Mm -mm. What I can do, I can join this. I can join this into a string. That's gonna make things a little bit easier, I think. If I join this into a string, I'm gonna have a string and I can search for that string inside whatever's uh, in there. Pattern. Um, so that's our pattern and I can say previous destination cups join as well so we have the string and then what I need to do is I need to have a regex um, Okay, let's first deal with this. Previous destination cups join. What if I remove slice, start, and? What if and becomes slice, zero, and becomes this? If I try, if end is zero base, negative, index can be used in case an offset from the end of the sequence. Extract the third element to the second to last, exactly what I want. Is it including? I'm not sure. I'll have to figure that out. Uh, well, let's figure that out now, because I don't want that bug later on. So slice, um, let's... Um, Let's figure it out. So we have array here, and then we're gonna do slice minus nine. What does that return? Oh wait, gotta get rid of this. Isn't it? It's complaining somewhere, probably because these are more multiple lines. Uh, and I can't uh, let me see I don't have multiple cursors on run JS can I just modify use vim key bindings nope not working oh that's a shame that I cannot have multiple cursors which I do want okay let's uh, I'm gonna It's complaining because it, it cannot accept an array like this for some reason. So I'm just gonna make sure I have an array with at least nine items, good, and remove the rest. I'm gonna play with this here. 
All right, so slice minus nine gets nine. Uh, because that's the beginning. If start, optional. A negative index can be used in getting an offset from the end of the sequence. Slice to extract the last two elements, which is what I want. Uh, so I wonder why it only returns nine. Well, how big is this array? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10. So minus 9 should return. What's minus 1? What does it return? A new array containing the extracted elements. Yeah. Wait, let me just comment all of this out. So we get seven here. Mm. All right, so it works now. There was something weird going on. Um, so the last nine, uh, seven, three, two, 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 should start with seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. Oh, great. That works. Good. So minus one. And then if you want to extract the remaining ones, then so we want to extract two and seven, then we need zero minus nine. Is that going to work? It's nice. Not a function here. Yep. All right, uh, two and seven. Great, yeah, that works. Good, so that needs to be uh, that. And then join, uh, so now we have a string and we need to match against the string if we find a new, so what I can say is um, we have two strings, so I guess we can use a string method for that. String, find another string, search, not search. Includes. Yep. So we can say includes pattern. Right. So in that case, if includes pattern, then we, this kind of like ugly, I'll refactor later. If it includes the pattern, then we found our pattern. So therefore, destination pattern is equal to pattern and as soon as we find our pattern we don't need to do any uh, thing like this so only if there's no destination pattern we do all this stuff otherwise we found our destination pattern so we don't need to do any of this uh, is this gonna work? I wonder. I wonder if there's no destination pattern. Do this, and if we find it at a destination pattern, if there is a destination pattern, we're gonna go in here. And once we have our destination pattern, we know that the next destination cup is gonna be the number that follows the current cup. So we can say um, I'm gonna add a find index, but that should be quick, I guess. I guess index of current cup. Um, this needs to be at the bottom here. index of destination cup because oh this does not need to be at the bottom this needs to be at the top and we'll need to have 
another one of this at the bottom I'm gonna add this here outside of the loop maybe inside it no it needs to be inside I'm gonna have to figure out the index of destination cup uh, in here as well and it's gonna have to be destination cup but what I'm doing instead of doing this multiple times I already can grab the destination cup cup from the pattern and I know that the destination cup is uh, whatever the index of the current cup is in that pattern index of current cup in pattern uh, pattern find cup find index cup equals to current cup yes yep current cup uh, then destination cup is gonna be destination cup is gonna be um, pattern current uh, index of current cup in pattern plus one and I need to use the modulo here so kind of like the same logic as here kind of like the same logic as here that's peculiar destination cup uh, da, da, da. pattern otherwise or No, it's gonna be a different one. So index of current cup in pattern is equal to pattern dot length minus one. Then we know that it's gonna to have to be uh, then we're gonna reach out of bounds, so then it's just zero. Actually need to copy this. Then it's just zero. Otherwise, it's uh, that. Yeah, so we kind of wrapped around. We wrapped around. So in this current pattern, it's equal to pattern dot length minus one. Uh, if that's the true, then we wrap around. If not, then continue. Then we have our destination cup. And then we need to find the destination cup inside the big cups um, to get the index. And then when we have the index, When we have the index, we will use that in here to kind of like insert the three cups. All right, let's uh, run the program. Fix the bugs first. Destination cup is not defined. 991. All right. Um, yeah, let's. Um, move destination cup in the outer scope because we're going to need it nation cup all right let's run the program again another pattern is not defined 73 oh wait if there's a destination pattern then use destination pattern and yeah we need to use destination pattern destination pattern destination pattern good another error destination pattern find index not a function all right that's because what's our destination pattern is pattern pattern is uh oh wait this is a string of course okay so then we need to split it 
split it. All right, so it runs. Uh, but it reaches an infinite loop somewhere. Maybe I'm not, I introduced new bugs. This one is definitely tricky guys. I'm already three hours in the, uh, in the stream and uh, it's not looking like I'm reaching an answer anytime soon. So I'm gonna try and go a little bit on. Well, it does go on, it's just much slower. <laughs> So instead of improving the program, I made it slower. Awesome. Uh, why? Well, let's let's remove this. I don't need to do that. I'm sure there's a pattern for three cups as well. Yeah, there is, because there's going to be the next three cups of whatever. Yeah, so I could um, I could get rid of all of this. And when I have the pattern, I can rid of the, get rid of this, and I can just... I know the three cups is going to be like 80, 81, 82. Um, and then whatever. Uh, next so I could optimize this a bit later on but now I'm just trying to find out why my program is stuck uh, why my program is slow so if there's a destination pattern which there isn't so this is gonna be skipped so then then we have this Then we have this. Uh, so this is just like, I have an, an, another conditional expression here, but it shouldn't take that much longer. And here, if there's, this takes a long time. Until we find a pattern, this is gonna take, it's gonna slow us down in the first few iteration. But this should pay itself off because this is gonna only happen the first four iterations. And then after this, it's not gonna do it anymore so and then we we do have a destination pattern here so we're not doing this anymore uh, let's see destination cup pattern maybe it doesn't find a pattern maybe there's some uh, maybe a logic does not uh, so let's um, I guess let's just add a breakpoint here and let's see what uh, our previous patterns are previous destination cups 2737 1 5 9 4 8 3 I mean it's gonna run until It finds a pattern, so that should be really soon now. Four, eight, three, seven, two, six. Right. So on this iteration right now, pattern is one five nine four eight three seven two six. Our previous cups is this. This should go into here. So maybe I can add a breakpoint here. And what's that return? Local. I thought I could see it somewhere. But the return value is here. Block pattern. Does it go in here? Oh, it does. Okay, so that's fine. And so our pattern is that. We split it which is good, and then we add it to destination pattern. So on our next iteration, we should have a destination pattern. We do. 
and now we should go in here and we should do, 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 do. and then we should uh, well peculiarly our numbers are we have strings okay so let's fix that first we'll need to um, um, mm -mm -mm. map let's make sure the cups are numbers again and then um, let's rerun the program uh, let's run it a few times here until we find a pattern I guess I can just remove these breakpoints and add one in here Alright, so we found a pattern, it's all a bunch of numbers, which is good. And then, um, index of current cup in pattern is minus 1. Ooh, that's interesting, it shouldn't be minus 1. should never be minus 1. So, current cup is, what's current cup? 83. No. Okay, so here's our bug. Uh, we don't care about the current cup, we care about the previous destination cup so hmm. we know when we find a pattern oh what I can do I can yeah I can this is gonna be our pattern so our destination pattern is gonna be this array what I can do is I can shift use shift to remove the first element which is going to be the destination and then I can add that element back to the destination pattern so, I can, so it can be reused so we can say um, we can get rid of this and this and destination cup is just going to be oh this is much simpler uh, destination pattern shift so we have our uh, destination cup and let's make sure that it's well yeah and let's make sure that it's added to the end push destination cup so we can reuse it after the panel repeats um, and push is going to modify the array in place And then, all right, so let's see how our program runs now. Um, it's faster than before, but uh, not that much faster, is it? Thousand, two, three. It's a little bit faster, but uh, not that much faster. Okay. So we we optimized it, but not enough. Well, okay. So what else can we optimize? Um, what is taking so long? Why is it? Uh, ideally, I wanna. Ideally, I don't. I shouldn't go through each move, but. Huh. If I could skip moves, if I could just say... What if... Well, I do, I do have a pattern of destinations. Can I perhaps use that somehow? Because when I have the pattern of destinations, I need to look up the index and I need to add the cups in there. But what if... And those cups are always like plus three, and if I add them there, um, current cup moves on. Yeah, I don't really care about the current cup either. What we care about is 
where the one ends up being. So kind of like back to our pattern of one, three, four, eight, eight, five, five, eight. So here one goes up by three. It stays the same, goes up by three, goes up by three, stays the same, goes up by three, goes up, stays, stays, up, stays, stays, up, up, stays, up, stays, stays. There's some pattern here, I think. That maybe I can use. Not sure. Um, okay, wait, do I see something here? So here, go up, wait, go up, go up, wait. Go up, wait, wait, go up, go up, wait, go up, wait, wait. Just one way, go up, wait, wait. Is this a pattern maybe that I can reuse? I'm gonna write it down. And if this doesn't give me anything, I'm afraid I'll have to cut off the stream because it's getting too long. Um, okay. Um, up. Wait. I'm gonna use U for up, W for wait. So we go up, wait, up. Wait, up, wait, wait, up, wait, uh, up, wait. So now we're at 29. Up, up, wait, up, wait, wait, up, up, wait, up. Is there a pattern here? So I can just start selecting and there should have to appear a pattern. Hey. These two are repeating. Which are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Look at that. So we found another pattern in how one moves in that cups. And that pattern is nine, um, is a pattern of nine, which kind of matches like how many uh, cups we have, we start with. So it goes up, waits, it goes up, up, waits, up, waits, waits, up. And then again, up, waits, up, up, waits, up, waits, waits, up. And then up, waits, up. Probably that's gonna repeat. My guess is gonna repeat. Okay, so can we use this somehow to quickly find out how where one is gonna end up after uh, how many iterations? After 10 million. So if we divide 10 million by nine, we're gonna have the amount of times this pattern repeats. And then, um, wait, I know that how many times does, how many positions does one move? When it goes up, it goes up by three, and then it waits, and it goes up by three, three again. So every time it goes up, it goes up by three, and then it's nine. So one, two, three, four, five. Five times three is uh, 15. So in each pattern, one moves up uh, 15 indexes. So I guess we can do maybe 10 million. I know this is not accurate, but we can say 10 million divided by nine times 15, because that's how many. So it's gonna go to the 16, somewhere in the 16th million index, and we're gonna wrap that around. March low, 1 million, because we only have 1 million. Um, no, not March low. It should be 16 
Okay, should be 16. It was like 16. Wait, 10 million. Let's do it again. 10 million divided by 9. This times 15 divided by 1 million. Yeah, so this is how far in the 1 million. So it's about two thirds. About two thirds. So I is going to be around. Um, 10 million. Wait, a million. Um, divided by 3 times 2. I is going to be around this index. Plus minus. It's going to be around the two thirds because it's going to wrap around. Maybe the pattern, the problem is that when the pattern might change when we reach the end, when we're done with all the numbers, you go back, it might be a different pattern. So um, I'm going to have to cut this stream uh, at this point since I am still stuck and um, my current approach is not leading me anywhere. And uh, yeah, like Siberian Lumberjack suggested, there's a pattern. Or optimization problem. Yeah, there's an optimization problem. And I try, I like, I'm trying to fix it by finding a pattern. Uh, but maybe yeah there could be different ways to optimize this um, a long running operation three cups you get the three cups i mean yeah this these three cups repeat themselves so i can maybe say but still what takes a long time is that we're going we're iterating 10 million times so even if you're not Even if you're not doing anything, if you're not doing anything here, and you just, on each iteration, you just add one to the uh, move. Well, you fairly, yeah. You end up, you do end up with an answer pretty quickly. Yeah, that runs fast. Okay, so um, we don't have to skip iterations. We can do something 10 million times, but whatever we do in here, it needs to be fairly quick. So adding one to move, that is quick. So that we can do. Uh, what needs to happen here, what we're our main operation in this all of this stuff so let me so we're what are we all doing here we're kind of like we're we're grabbing three cups because we need to add them somewhere in in our in our array but we don't know where so we know that we have our current cup and then we hear all of this is trying to find the destination cup. So now we can use the destination cup to know where to add these cups. And we grab the index of the destination cup. So maybe the index has a pattern which can just say, hey, three cups would have there. If you know what the three cups are, because they have a pattern too, we know uh, this one as well we have a pattern for that as well then we can just have this part here and then we don't care about the current cup because the current cup is only used to get the next three cups by having the index of current cup but since we already have the three cups due to a pattern we actually only care about this this is what needs to happen on every iteration 
Um, so I'll somehow need to find a What did I say? Uh, a pattern for index of destination cup. Yes, yeah, so I know where to add the three cups. So index of destination cup is gonna be two, 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 let's say here. Uh, let's remove all of them. Let's add this to watch. So index of destination cup is 1, 5, 0, 3, 5, 11, 4, 1, 21, 0, 9, 22, 8, 20, 32, 16, 4, 45, 0, 18, 40, 14, 35, 53, 28. There is a pattern in here. There is some type of pattern. Uh, but I'll have to figure that out. I'll have to, so um, off stream, I'll try and solve it if I can. But I'll have to figure out the pattern or where, of where to insert the three cups and what the three cups are. And I already know what the three cups are because at some point, three cups are just. Um, They're just like here, the next three numbers. We have 168, 169, 170. And then we skip one, and then it's 172, 73, 74. We skip one, 76, 77, 78. We skip one, 80. So that's the pattern for our three cups. So really using that pattern, we can get the three cups fairly quickly. And if we have a pattern for this as well, then we can pretty much just ditch everything in here, remove all of that, and just modify array. And if we do this part, we can also dish this. If you only modify the array in an iteration and we do that 10 million times, that's going to give us an answer pretty quick. Um, so that's where somewhere where our solution needs to be. But the most difficult part here is finding a pattern for, for the uh, index of where you need to add those three cups which is reliant on the current cup minus one which is destination cup and then that index yeah so i'm gonna cut the stream short here um and uh, hopefully i'm gonna get back to you in the next stream tomorrow morning with a solution for this and um um and that's uh yeah that's it uh thank you for watching thank you for sticking around with me at least we solved the first part which is uh which is neat um and um i hope to see you tomorrow uh, same time central european time uh uh 10 a.m 10 a.m tomorrow it's going to be day 24 of Advent of Code, so it's going to be the second last day. We have two more days left. Uh, we're almost near the finish line. And uh, yeah, if you're watching this on YouTube in a recording after, just go to the next video. Uh, you don't need to wait uh, until tomorrow. Thank you very much for watching again and uh, see you uh, around. Have a nice day. Bye bye.